Hey guys and welcome back to another video. Today's video is an advice slash letter to my younger self. I've got a bunch of things here that I think may have helped me along my journey and maybe things that I probably should have known or done a lot better. Uh, so let's jump straight into it. Number one, listen to your parents. Now, I definitely didn't listen to my parents a lot when I was younger. I did most of the time, but there were definitely a lot of things that I was like, no, I know better. Like, what are you talking about? You know, and I really should listen to my parents a lot more. You know, advice on friends where they're like, you know, that person's really not good. You shouldn't be hanging around them. And I was like, no, they're fine. They're my friends. What do you know? Full ghetto, I know. <laughs> And I really should have listened to them because they were right and it turned out those people weren't the right people to be in my life and I shouldn't have had them. The parents are always right, as annoying as it sounds, they are generally right on a lot of things and even if I didn't want to hear it at the time, I should have listened now. But I know that now, now that I'm an adult, I generally listen to them most times. Not all the time. <laughs> Advice number two, don't settle for your friends. Following on from my last comment, my friends, I've been through a lot of friendship groups and there were some friends that were toxic and that weren't good for me. But I was just, you know, a young girl who wanted friends and who wanted to hang out um, with the cool kids, I guess. And I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have followed and been a sheep. Uh, so I think it's important to find friends who love you for you who gel with you. Uh, I've had friends in the past who have been embarrassed of me because of my disability, who have not wanted to be seen in public with me because they thought that boys wouldn't come near us or that they couldn't get with boys when I was there because I'd turn them off. And that's a horrible thing for a friend to say, not only to your face, but to say in general and to hear about yourself. Um, because it's not true and it wasn't true. It was more the fact that maybe they didn't want to hang out with her and it wasn't my fault. But at the time, I believed it. I was like, oh, yeah, like, it's okay. Like, I get it. Like, I won't hang out with you. You know, it was hurtful. But I just wanted friends, so I just did whatever I could. Advice number three. These advice all sort of follow on from each other. But advice number three is be confident. Now, not being confident where you're a bit of a dick. Being confident to step outside my comfort zone. I was so afraid of going to parties I was invited to or talking to the pretty girl because I thought she'd judge me or... You know, I just, I'm a confident person, but not confident back then. I let my disability and I let my insecurities take control a lot. And I shouldn't have done that. Um, and I see that now and I wish I put myself out there a lot more because I would have had a lot more opportunities and I let myself down in that way. Number four, don't date a boy just because he's showing interest in you. I did this with my very first boyfriend. Uh, all my friends sort of had interest with boys and I was like, eh, you know, whatever. And then a boy came along, he showed interest in me and I was like, oh my God, attention, a boy, ah, uh, and I dated him. I dated him for about three months and it wasn't worth it. Like it was, I was just dating him just for the sake of it. I didn't, wasn't interested in him or anything like that. Um, and I shouldn't have done that. And I went on dates with a lot of boys that were crap. I've had, I had a boy scream you're a bloody retard out in the middle of the shopping center just to embarrass me because i didn't want to make out with him in the corner of the shopping center um you know and that's that's horrible i remember coming home and crying to mom and saying what is wrong with me why don't why are boys so mean to me like this and and it wasn't my fault it was his fault and now that i look at him and where he is in life i feel much better about myself i tell you that much and step number five, this is following on from the last one. Don't change, you are worth it. Like I found myself wanting to change, wanting to be like my friends so that I fit in and was cool or, you know, did the things they wanted to do. You know, they'd go out drinking and things like that and I didn't drink. And, you know, I kept thinking, oh no, if I just drink, like I'll be fine, I'll fit in. And, and it's not worth it, it wasn't worth putting myself through that, I guess. I just, I would tell my younger self, don't change who you are because I know now that I am a pretty good person and I'm proud of who I am now, but I was embarrassed when I was younger. So I would definitely tell myself, stick to your guns. Don't change for that idiot of a friend who's not even a good friend anyway. Number six, don't be a sheep. 
I was such a sheep in high school, as you guys can probably sense a theme. I followed everything my friends did. Um, you know, if my friends were wearing 20 bracelets on their arm, I was doing it, doing their makeup the same, the hair the same, going for sleepovers and eating the same food, talking to the same boys, like doing all that kind of stuff. And it just, it just wasn't worth it. Looking back now, um, those friends weren't friends and I'm not friends with them anymore. And I'm so glad because if I had stuck with that, I wouldn't be where I am today. And that's a real shame. Number seven, okay. This still relates to me now, so I guess this is not only uh, a letter to my younger self or advice to my younger self, but advice to me now. Don't be so sensitive. I used to take everything and anything that people said to me on board um, because I wasn't confident enough and I took everything to heart. If someone said that my hair was ugly, I'd be like, oh my god, I'm going to change it. I, just, I didn't know my worth and I didn't know that I was enough, you know, and that these people are stupid and they don't know what they're talking about. Um, I am still a very sensitive person. I cry at the top of a hat. Not so much because people have said things to me, um, more so just I'm emotional. I don't know, I just cry at the top of a hat. And sometimes I can't even explain it. Last weekend I cried three times and when my partner asked me what was wrong, I just cried, I don't know, I don't know. And I honestly did not know. I, I don't know, I think my hormones are just completely out of whack because I had no idea that I was just crying the whole time. It was so bad. And don't get stuck into drama. Oh, I was in some drama. Not that I was at the center of it, but a lot of my friends were very dramatic and they liked to put themselves into it. And if you're in a friendship group, you sort of, you wound up all into it. And unfortunately, I had to change friendship groups a couple of times. Um, the group that I finally ended with was good, but the group that I stuck with for most of high school were full of drama and if I look at them now, they still are um, and that's just who they are. And I'm so glad that I realised that and got out of the drama, um, but it's still in that this today that I don't want to be in drama and if you've got it, I don't have time for it. Um, I'm too busy doing me, doing what I want to do with life and I don't have time for your crap basically um but i would definitely tell my younger self to really stick away from it it just brings you no good at all and follow your passion now i had a couple i've got quite a few passions really so it's really hard for me to follow just one like stick to it go to it um but i think it's really important so coming out of high school my passion was travel it still is i love 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 love, love, love to travel um, but I pursued a travel course and tried to do that to become an agent or something in travel. It didn't work out so I moved on to my next passion which is disability and disability is my passion um, along with travel and my aim further on in life is to mix the two and to be doing something that incorporates both of them and then I'd be completely happy. Um, following your passion I feel like I'm sort of doing it now. We're starting up this channel and being more creative in my day-to-day -day life. Um, I love being creative. I love expressing myself. I love giving my opinions out there. And it was something that I didn't get a chance to do. So I feel like I'm starting to sort of follow my passions, but in school I didn't. I just did the subjects of the electives that my friends were doing so that I would have friends in class. And that is so, so, so dumb. Do the things that you want to do. If they're all doing biology because, you know, they want to do biology and you want to do forensic science, hell yeah, go do it. Forensic science. I love forensic science. Okay, another one for my younger self, and this is going to come through to me now, this is just like a little kick up the butt, eat better and move your body more. Uh, I ate reasonably well like, during school, I guess my mum was packing my lunches throughout school and things like that, um, so I did eat reasonably well, but I ate a lot of crap. I, you know, going out after school with friends or on the weekends and things like that, and I didn't exercise at all, I didn't really have, I didn't have a gym membership throughout high school or anything like that. Um, you know, it's only sort of the last five years that I've actually gone, okay, I need to move my body, and especially my right side, get everything moving, get everything working, um, eat better. And I wish that I had done that, you know, in high school, because I would have probably not been as insecure about my body and about my flaws that I thought I had. Um, and I think that would just help me have that bit of confidence to do the things I wanted to do, so it all would have connected together. 
And my last one is love yourself. It sounds so, so dorky, but this day and age, not enough people love themselves. Not enough people go, hell yeah, I'm a good person. I know what I'm doing. I rock what I'm doing, you know, and put themselves out there. Not enough people do it. And I will be the first to admit that I really struggle to love myself. I see myself as a list of flaws. I don't see myself as a great person with, you know, this great quality and that great quality. I see myself, yeah, in the, in the negative light. And it's only been the last probably even six months, I'm not even exaggerating, that I've started to finally love myself and say, you know what? I may not like X, Y, and Z about myself, but I like A, B, and C, you know? Um, and it's been a real mission, I guess, to notice that and understand it and appreciate myself for who I am. Um, so that is my advice slash letter to myself, whether it be my younger self or now. Um, I hope you guys took some things away from that or understood or could see where I was coming from. Um, I think it's a really good thing to reflect and reflect on where you've come from and how far you've come. I know that there are things on this list that I don't do anymore. I am much more confident. I put myself out there a lot more. I, you know, accept invitations to parties or I'll wear the clothes that I want to wear, not because someone else is telling me to do this or do that. I just do me, um, which is really good. But I am still struggling with things like eating better, working out, loving myself, things like that. Um, so it is a long process. It's not going to happen overnight, but just keep working on it because I know that I am and you know, maybe one day I'll fully get there and that's great and that's exciting to know that one day I may completely love myself and be completely confident and happy within who I am. And I hope you guys can do that too and get there as well. Uh, so the next videos you will see will, might be some vlogs. My friends from America are coming this weekend. I am so, so excited. Um, I can't wait for you guys to see them and meet them. And yeah, stay tuned. Not a lot of more sit down vlogs anymore, though I might be traveling and coming with me on our adventures. So I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Thanks for watching. Hit the like, subscribe, and comment. And I will see you in my next video. Bye.